Hello, my name is David and welcome to our today's tutorial. Today tutorial, we are going to look at design of universal steel column. Now the question read, calculate the ability of 203 by 203 by 52 universal column in S275 steel to withstand an axial compressive load of 1250 kN over an supported height of 3.6 meter. Assuming that both ends are held in position but are provided with no restraint in direction. Use S275 grade steel. Now what we start, we'll start with the, now we'll read the section properties of a universal column 203 by 203 by 52 from the steel table. This is how we will proceed. This is our steel table for the universal column. Our column is 203 by 203 by 52. Now looking at it on our, the, the description of columns, you have depth of section, width of section, up to radius of gyration. Now, the, our properties of interest are capital D, capital B, small t, capital T, small d, and B over 2t. Now, like for example here, our D will be given to 2 or 6.2, our B will be 2 or 3, our T will be 7.9, our capital T 12.5 all the way. Our radius of gyration along X, our XX will be 8.91 centimeter. And our radius of gyration along Y, Y axis will be 5.16 centimeter. That is how we obtain. Then we can also obtain our D over T is 19.7 and our B over 2T. Remember B over 2t is the same as small b over capital T because technically capital B is, is equivalent to two times small b. We have now obtained all the required all the required property. Now we can proceed by now saying that our design strength, PY, will be equivalent to 275 Newton per millimeter squared. Now, our grade is 275. Now, the reason why our PY is 275 is that uh, the thickness of flange, capital T, and the thickness of web, small letter T, their value are less than 16. That is why we are adopting a value of 275 Newton per millimeter squared. Then effective length, based on table 22, and the support, conditions or end condition of our universal steel column, you find that effective length is given by one times eh, the unsupported or the actual length. We find it is a eh, 3600 millimeter. Now we can check for buckling. We have checks to perform, for example, based on table 11 of PS5950. We have the value of B over T should be less or equal to 15, but we know 15, 15, we can call epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is given by square root of the design strength divided by 275. For our case here, design strength is 275, meaning 275 over 275 is one, square root of one is one. Now the check we need, we know that our value of B over T is eight point, one seven, which is less or equal to nine. We now by this we can classify that our flange is plastic. Then in terms of slenderness, you look at d over t. D over t is equivalent to now our d over t we found it as nineteen point seventy, but the the limit for it to be um, to be not slender is 70 epsilon naught. Now, since it is 19.70 and this one will give us 40, we say web is not slender. Now we can say, then we can conclude by saying the column is not slender. Then you go to compressive strength of section. Compressive strength is given by the area, the area the gross area of the section multiplied by the by the uh -huh. uh, compressive strength obtained from table 24C. And this to obtain this PC compressive strength from table 24C, 
you must use lengthness ratio and design strength. I don't have the table as per now, but let me illustrate. Now, what happened is that uh, we have one axis and the other axis. So here, along this, we have the slenderness ratio. Then here we have, um, then here we have P, P, Y. Remember this is table 24 C or cow C. Now I will come and say, if my value here, so let's continue, in that now, our, our lambda along the x-axis will be equivalent to the effective length divided by the radius of gyration along the x-x as we obtain it above, you get 40.4. Then our lambda along y it will be effective length along y divided by radius of gyration along the y-axis, you find it 69.7. Now what will happen here? There are two values you are going to get PCX and PCY. But since our interest, we want to, to take the lowest value so that we don't disadvantage this particular column, now we shall only use, we, we shall only obtain the value of PC, which has the highest lambda. Now, the, the higher the lambda, the lesser the value of PC. So for our case here, the y-axis are the highest lambda, so we shall use the y. We shall use the lambda y, y, or it's ratio in the y-axis. So I'll come here from that table 24C. I'll come and identify now from lambda, I will identify 69.7. So we have 69. Point seven, six nine point seven, and then I have two seventy five as my py design strength. So their meeting point where they will meet here, that will be my value of p c. Remember it is twenty four table twenty four c, and you have to perform interpolation because most of them you find that 69.7 is being found between some whole number interval so you'll have to interpolate and find the value which correspond to 69.7 now moving with that you find that now our compressive strength now pc from table 24c will be equivalent to 182 Newton per millimeter squared. Now design compressive strength will be equivalent to gross area multiplied by the compressive strength we obtain from the table using the lambda slantness ratio and the design strength PY, which will give us 182 multiplied by 6630, giving us 1,206.660 kilonewton. Remember our design load we are checking against 1,250, meaning this column is not able to resist the, the applied load. So we say it's not okay. Thank you, subscribe, like, and share my channel. Goodbye, see you again.